G'day guys, Fitcho here and welcome to another MotoGP 18 video. Today we're having a look at the brand new Thailand Grand Prix coming to MotoGP later this year. Round number 15 of this year's 19 round championship at the Buriram International Circuit or the Chang International Circuit depending on which name you want to use. At first I was a bit confused by how the circuit has two names but I looked it up. Chang is obviously an alcohol brand and they have the title sponsorship with the circuit but in some countries alcohol advertising is banned like in the Middle East. If you follow Formula 1, you'll know for Abu Dhabi and Bahrain, Williams, who have Martini sponsorship, they have to take that off their car and just run a light blue livery instead of the light blue, dark blue, red stripes for those races. The same thing goes here when alcohol advertising isn't appropriate in a certain country. They have a backup name, which is the Buriram International Circuit. And interesting, interestingly enough, I should say, the game has actually decided to go with the Buriram International Circuit title instead of the Chang International Circuit title. And I believe that's probably to keep try to keep the uh, G rating on the game. But interestingly enough, the commentator in-game in the sort of intro to this race actually says the Chang International Circuit. But that's enough history about the two names for this one circuit. We have a race on our hands, a chance to look at the brand new track coming to MotoGP this year. If you guys follow World Superbikes, you will have seen this track in action a couple times. I think they've been racing there since 2015, but this year is the first year for MotoGP. And thanks to the brand new MotoGP 18 game, we can go there, have a race with this year's MotoGP field and see what things are gonna be like before the bikes actually hit the track in anger later this year. So here we have a quick overview of the Chang International Circuit. It is 4.55 kilometers long. It is 12 meters wide, which is very, very wide. And at points, you will notice just how ridiculously wide the track is. You got five corners to the left, seven to the right, and one kilometer worth of straights. So before we get into today's race, I just want to take you guys on a hot lap of the Chang International Circuit to show you guys the layout and see a bike around here by itself in anger. Here we go, out of the final corner we come up to the line to start our flying lap. As you can see, the line comes up really, really quickly on the pit straight. It's now back on the brakes we go for turn number one, a nice 90 degree right hander to start things off in a really pivotal corner because it leads onto this ridiculously long back straight and also ridiculously wide. You can see it's absolutely insane. Through the kink at turn number two is now hard on the brakes as we head down towards turn number three, an insanely heavy braking zone down to this long and difficult hairpin. You're just wanting to get on the throttle, just waiting and waiting, but if you go a bit too early, you end up just running the bike wide, which I have done so many times. But through there quite nicely on this lap is now onto yet another straight as you head down to turn number four, a nice third gear left-hander, and now towards turn number five. Get the bike back to first gear. We've missed the apex ever so slightly. Run it wide now through turn number six. Such a tricky corner. You just want to get on the throttle, but you just can't open it up yet as now we flick back into turn number seven, and now we can finally open it up open it up, up through the gears, but back on the brakes for turn number eight, using a little bit too much curve there. It's now up to third gear, then back down to first gear for this long turn number nine, almost 180 degrees here, now back on the power, into second gear, into turn number 10, careful on the throttle, and now you open it up, as now we flick back to the right. I got the line wrong there, but normally you can do that transition flat, as we got a little bit wide and invalidated our lap time, but down to the final corner, a difficult Right hand hairpin back on the power, run a little bit wide again, a bit scrappy there and across the line. The lap was invalidated so I don't know what the time is but nonetheless you've seen a lap of this circuit and I think it is time to go racing. So I've actually just noticed something while I was switching over to the race. If you look on the right hand side of the screen it says that Jack Miller rides a GP18 bike but that's not true. He's on the GP17 bike, a year old bike, whereas Petrucci is on the GP18 bike. So that's a little bit of an issue. I'm not sure if the way they've programmed the game that that's attached to the uh, Pramac Ducati team because one bike is the GP18 and that's why it's listed or it's attached to the individual rider, in which case there is a mistake there. But nonetheless, we're getting ready for a three lap race around the Chang or Buriram International Circuit in Thailand. As you can see, I'm riding as Jack Miller. I'm not sure if I mentioned that. If you haven't already been able to tell, I am Australian, so I'm riding as the Australian, as a proud Aussie, of course. We're going to be starting last as well, just to spice things up a bit. Let's do it. Hello, everyone from the Chang Circuit, where the Thai round of the Moto3 Championship is about to start. The weather forecasts are very reassuring. We will have sunny weather for the entire duration of the race. We are moving to the starting grid, while the cameras are showing us the riders concentrating before the start of the race. The warm-up lap has just finished, and the riders have taken their places on the starting grid. The Thai Grand Prix is about to start. 
Here we go, it is race time here in Thailand. Grab the clutch, get the bike into gear, the revs are up, the lights are on. As lights out and away we go, the Thailand Grand Prix is underway and it's not been a good start from ourselves at the back of the field as we head down towards turn number one. Can we get up the inside of Tom Luty? Yes, we can. And now back on the power, we get an amazing exit out of turn number one onto the back straight as we are getting a lot of positions. Up next, we have Valentino Rossi in 14th place just in front of us. It's now hard on the brakes we go for the turn three hairpin. We're already up into 15th place, but Scott Renning just shoves his Aprilia up our inside, but onto the power nice and early on the outside of turn three, and we get a nice run past Rossi now, as who is that just in front of us? That is Tito Rabat, as we head down towards turn number four. We're going very late on the brakes, up the inside of Jorge Lorenzo, and we make that corner quite nicely. It seems like the AI were a little bit early on the brakes, as now we're already on the back of our teammate, on the brink of the top 10. Danilo Petrucci just there in 10th place through turn number six, as now we flick back to the right for turn number seven. Back on the power, we go up through the gears, and now back on the brakes. Can we try to get a nice sort of late apex? Get up the inside of Petrucci into this next one. No, we can't. We've actually gone a little bit wide and a little bit deep. And he's left the door on the exit. No, I can't quite get on the power as the bike is bucking and weaving there. Trying to pull a bit of a wheelie as Jorge Lorenzo. The Honda bound man is trying to sneak up our inside. Is now down to the final corner. We go a very tricky corner, I find. This one's very, very tight. And now back. Onto the power we go to end lap number one of three here as Dovi is leading from Danny Pedrosa. Is now back on the brakes we go for turn number one. Try to get a nice exit out of here. A fair bit of wheel spin there. Is now going to jump into the slipstream of our teammate Danilo Petrucci down the back straight through the kink at turn number two. And we didn't get a good as good an exit as we did on lap number one. But hard on the brakes. Can we gain a little bit of time? On our teammate, yes, we can as now try to hold it tight. Now let the bike wash out wide, get on the power, and around the outside of Alicia Spargo we go. And now into the top 10, we are right in 10th place. Now on the back of Danilo Petrucci. Can we look up his inside, down into turn 4, and up the inside of Alex Rins we go. And up into 8th place, and can we take Anoni at turn number 6? Yes, we can. Very close to Zarco's bike because we've run a little bit deep, a bit early on the power, and Anoni takes that position back through turn number six, but up his inside at turn seven. No, we're not quite close enough. He gets across the apex and holds on to seventh place. We're gonna look up his inside into turn number, oh, we've taken too much curb. Turned in a little bit too early there and just got on the blue stuff and Anoni holds on to that position. Rightfully so, as now Alex Rins is trying to get back up our inside and he's gonna do that as we ran very, very wide through turn number nine. Now flick it back to the right through 11. And one corner to go before we start the final lap of this three lap race. Here we go, onto the final lap we go. Dovi is still leading for, from Pedrosa, is down to turn number one. We go up the inside of Alex Rins, who's going very, very slowly into that corner. And we just take that position very, very nicely into eighth place. As now we're in the slipstream of Andrea Inoni down the back straight. Can we look up his inside down into turn number three? Such a heavy braking zone. And Ah, we've just been clipped by Inoni. It seemed to work so well at first. We are just going to use a cheeky little replay there. Nobody saw anything. No one saw us losing the front end as we tried an aggressive move at a very tight corner up the inside of Inoni. And we're just going to sit behind the Italian through turn number three and try to get a nice exit and maybe try something at turn number four as we're getting very loose with that rear wheel, getting a bit too aggressive on the power and on the curb. And we don't get the exit that we want is now down towards turn number four. We found we are quick through here compared to the AI and hopefully we can gain a little bit of time on Inoni. It's going to be interesting to see where he actually ends up, ne up next year as we went in a little bit too deep is now too aggressive on the power as you can see. I'm still very much getting used to this game of course. This is release day. I've only had my hands on the game for a few hours. I've done a few three lap races and one career mode race. But of course that's only on a Red Bull Rookies Cup bike so the traction isn't something I have to think about in that. So it's taken a little bit of getting used to as now we only have a couple corners left. Can we possibly get a nice run through the next two corners to try to get past Inoni and get seventh place. We are nowhere near close enough, I don't think, because we have one corner standing between us 
and the checker flag hard on the brakes. Can we try it up the inside? That's a little bit aggressive and that's just not going to work and it really shouldn't. Could we get a nice exit? Not quite. But we come home in 8th place. A decent race there, I would say. So there we go, the final results. Andrea Divizioso wins the race. Mark Marquez coming home in second. Danny Pedrosa third. Cal Crutchlow fourth. Vignella Zarco and Anoni in fifth, sixth, and seventh. Myself, Jack Miller, all the way up in eighth place after starting in last. I set a 130.6, which is only three tenths of a second off the fastest lap of the race set by Dobby, a 130.399. Then Alex Rins just behind us, and I think our teammate in tenth, Danilo Petrucci, yep, finishing in 10th place. So that was just a quick, let's just jump up the replay while I just have a random chat about this track. So that was a three lap race around the brand new Buram or Chang International Circuit, which is coming to MotoGP this season. Like I already said in the intro, round 15 of 19 in this year's championship. And the first time it is featured on the MotoGP World Championship. And as you can see watching this replay, just how ridiculously wide the track is on that back straight and through that little kink at turn number two. Turn three, it's insanely difficult to get the bike stopped down there on the game. And I can only imagine it's going to be so, so much more difficult in real life. It's sort of a bit like Mugello turn one, but even almost a heavier braking zone than that, it feels like from playing. I've, I've done some racing on Mugello here as well, but I feel like Turn 3 here is almost a bigger braking zone than Turn 1 at Mugello or Qatar, for example, Turn 1. Those braking zones are insane, but this, Turn 3, is absolutely mad. Uh, after that, you've got another nice straight. Turn 4 is actually quite fun. I found the AI a bit slow through there. Then you get into the tricky technical section. You've got Turn number 5, which I've every lap I've gone deep there. I cannot get the bike stopped. I cannot work out where to brake quite right. Then turn six, that next left hander, you're just so tentative on the throttle. The bike just wants to get out from under you and you can't let the bike then wash out wide as well. You have to sort of manage your speed through there and your line to then flick it back to the right 4.7, which has got a double apex, which proves a little bit tricky. Then you've got the fast right, oh not fast, but second gear fairly quick. It's like a 70 degree corner, I'd say. At turn number eight, I should say, Turn 9, you got almost a hairpin there. Then you got that left hand, you just wind to get on, back on the power as soon as you can, and the quick flick to the right, and then down to the final corner. Key overtaking point to definitely turn 3. And I'd say the final corner, turn 4 into 5, possibly, if you get a really nice run, because that is coming off a long straight. And turn 1 can be as well. But nonetheless, it looks like an exciting track, and I can't wait to see MotoGP visit this place in real life. MotoGP makes every track look good. I absolutely love the action in it, especially as a Formula 1 fan at first, now becoming a MotoGP fan over since 2015. MotoGP just never disappoints compared to what F1 does, and I cannot wait to see a brand new track on the MotoGP calendar. So that is going to do it for today, guys. That was a first look at the Chang or Buram International Circuit on MotoGP 18. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you do smash that like button. If you guys are new to the channel, make sure you do subscribe as well for much, much more MotoGP 18 content. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.